Uh, thank you so much and welcome again to our, our lesson uh, study series. This is Kusda Church and this is a, a Kusda Sabbath School lesson a panel. Uh, joining uh, you today, I'll be your host, uh, Lebron Onyango. And for the first time, I have uh, our sister, Penina To, that will be joining us today from School of uh, Pure and Applied Sciences. And I also have my brother, uh, Eric Musiaga, joining me again uh, from School of Engineering. And I have uh, Bonface Ochieng uh, joining me from School of Education. And I have Elder Rastas Otieno joining me from uh, uh, School of Engineering. Gentlemen and lady, welcome as we study together again lesson number 11, lesson number 12, rather. Uh, Sabbath, experiencing and living the character of God. Uh, before I proceed, I will ask my brother Eric, uh, my brother Erastas, kindly pray with us as we proceed. Let us pray, Almighty Father in heaven. As we want to venture in the study of this lesson, all we ask is for the presence of your Holy Spirit to teach us your holy word. Is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Elder Rastas. Uh, uh, I want to implore you that as we begin our study, you can have your Bible and a pen, and you can uh, join us as we go through the lesson number 12. And I hope it will be uh, an interesting and a uh, discussion that at the end uh, you will get something uh, new as we get more closer uh, to Christ. So the topic of t uh, of, t of, of um, this week is experiencing and living the character of God. Those are two things combined in one, uh, experiencing and living the character of God. And it is um, talking about the Sabbath. I know the issue of Sabbath is something that uh, has brought in uh, a lot of um, slight differences or not even slight but a great uh, difference between our church that is Adventist and other churches mostly it's what separate the Adventism from other uh, uh, churches and Sabbath never started yesterday it never started last week Sabbath is one of the two institutions that God created and gave to man in the garden of, uh, of Eden so most of the time uh, uh, Sabbath or rather the church has been uh, um, uh, 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 equated to a marriage where Christ is the bridegroom and the church is uh, the bride. So take a, lit a literal example where we have a marriage, a marriage, a toxic uh, marriage where the couples are just not going to separate or they don't want to divorce because they fear or they're afraid of the consequences that will come after or the pain that will come after uh, the uh, divorce. Such marriage is like a burden. Is there's no love there, there's no unity. But in the other end, think of a marriage that is united in love. It's a marriage that the burden is less. Uh, in fact, there's no burden, there's uh, enjoyment, there's love, there's unity in that, uh, in that kind of marriage. And uh, that is the aspect or of what we want to today. You want to discuss more again, uh, more uh, into, as we proceed. Is as is Sabbath a burden to us, or is it something that we should enjoy? And that one draws my attention to the uh, key text of today. Our key text of this Sabbath is, uh, uh, is this lesson rather is coming from Mark 2, 27, moving to 28, and I'll read. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. If you read this uh, text, the first thing that comes to your mind is what was made for what? Is Sabbath made for man or man made for Sabbath? Christ uh, tells us that the Sabbath indeed was made for man. If something is made for you, it shows that it is a beneficial to you. You are not benefiting it, but it's benefiting you. Is that true? So when Sabbath is made uh, uh, for, for a man, which means we, sh a, a Sabbath should bring bring blessings upon us. A Sabbath should be something that we enjoy. A Sabbath should be uh, something that we are happy when we uh, uh, rest uh, on, on Sabbath. Um, Allow me, uh, uh, my brother, or someone can read for me. Um, the book is Isaiah 56, verse 7. Isaiah 56, verse 7. Okay, as, as, you, as you look for uh, the Isaiah 56, uh, wha verses uh, 7. So as I mentioned earlier, that um, moving straight to the Sunday section, time to be astonished, uh, 
in creation story in chapter genesis chapter 1 and genesis chapter 2 we have two creations account uh, the first creation account take uh, 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 an account of the creation from day 1 moving up to uh, day 6 but i'm interested in the second creation account that is in genesis uh, chapter 2 where we meet two creation uh, we meet two institutions that god uh, created in the garden of eden that is the institution of marriage and the institution of of sabbath of worship of rest and particularly today we are much interested of that of rest after creation god took his time to rest and in that uh, uh moment it showed it showed man that indeed you can labor for six days but on the seventh day is a day of rest a sabbath is a unique day it's not the same like any other day why because it's a day that is sanctified first it is blessed and it was a day that is meant for our rest is a day that god knew that adam and eve or man rather will toil for six days but on the seventh day is the day that man should have time to connect himself uh, to uh, uh, the creator as we're going going to going, going to uh, learn more as we proceed we're going that uh, learn that the sabbath itself is a day that should bring man closer to god is a day that God placed there intentionally so that we can remember him. And most importantly, we can remember him as the creator. Have you find uh, Isaiah 56 verse 7? Yeah, Isaiah 56 verse 7. It says, Even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So uh, that verse, uh, verse 56, uh, verse 7, brings a different aspect to Sabbath, the aspect of education. Is Sabbath uh, a moment of education? Most often, or uh, I can say that most in most uh, scenario, many people learn of God or learn of Christianity through the Sabbath through the sermons, through the singing, through the Bible studies that we have on, on the Sabbath, through the family uh, unions and so on, even the youth ministry, the convention and so on. We can, I can confidently say that about 90% of what we learn, we learn on the day of Sabbath. So Sabbath is a day that it is supposed to also a day of education. It's a day that is a day of learning. It's a day that we ought to learn something new about our Creator. It's a day that through going the scripture, I'm not meaning that is we wait and only uh, open our scripture on the Sabbath or open our Im, Im, Im book on Sabbath. No, but basically, a Sabbath should be a day uh, of education. It's a day that uh, we should co continuously. It should bring us closer to God, and the only way that we can come closer to God is by learning the Creator. Uh, all the creations were made through Christ. So, if you want to deeply understand uh, Christ. We have to also learn from the nature, also learn uh, from his creation. And Sabbath point us uh, as well uh, to that uh, direction. As we uh, move on, I would like at this moment to welcome our sister, uh, Penato, to take us uh, 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 on time of rediscovery. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And as mentioned earlier, my name is Peninato. I'm going to take us through a topic, time for this rediscovery. We find that a Sabbath, not only being a means for us to study or to learn more about God. It also gives us an opportunity to rediscover ourselves. In this, we're going to see about the Israelites. When Moses was called in the bush by God, he was asked to let the Israelites move out of Egypt to go to the wilderness for a Sabbath worship. But we see what happened when the, when the, pres when the leader of Egypt did not allow them to go. All through the period when they were in wilderness, God was just trying to bring them and to remind them of who they are. While in Egypt or while in bondage, there were people, they were under slavery. They didn't have an opportunity to worship. All they were just, they were enslaved. But when they were out in the wilderness, actually they experienced the full manifestation of God. All through the challenges they passed, God was with them. Let's read an example of God leading them or providing for them for 40 years with a bread of heaven called manna. All these, we will find this in the book of Exodus 16, 14 to 29. I'm just going to summarize. This food was given to them when the Israelites were really, really grumbling to Moses and telling Moses, why did you bring us out of Egypt? Were there no food? Were there no graves that you brought us here to die? And Moses will just turn to God and ask God, what can I do to your children? It's you who 
instituted this journey for me to take them. And God told Moses for 40 years or for 40 years that you will be or for all the time that you will be here, I'm going to provide bread from heaven. It was being rained in, in the morning and in the evening and they were supposed to pick the what? They were supposed to pick the bread. They were just to pick the specific amount so that the next day when they went out, they will also find the same bread. But not all Israelites followed the instruction that they were given. Some picked excess and what happened to the excess? It went bad. But there was a miracle that happened. It's called a threefold miracle. It happens on Sabbath. On Friday, they were told they are supposed to pick for two days. One for Friday and another one for what? For Sabbath. So this, the, the first miracle we find, they were supposed to pick for two days. And then be pr the prior days or the other days of the week, when they would pick excess and keep it in their chance, it will go bad. But the one that were meant for the Sabbath, it didn't go bad. Because God had preserved the Sabbath. They were not supposed to go out and collect the manna. There was no bread from heaven that was raining that day. And then we find here, also being a Sabbath to the Israelites, it was to show them that every day in the morning they will wake up and go and collect manna and find them. They will just get it enough for the day. So that the next day they will still go. It was just to build the trust and the relationship, to reestablish the relationship between Israelites and God. Reminding Israel that God indeed is the provider. And then secondly, it was just to remind them that in as much as it was God who was had the sole plan of them being in the wilderness or actually at them being out of what? Being out of Egypt into the wilderness so that God will establish that relationship that had been broken for them, for the Israelites to rediscover themselves. And then again, we find Sabbath is a five... Uh, is a pivot learning experience in the journey of rediscovery. It also becomes a clear signal to other nations of the special relationship between God and Israelites. When others would see how God was with the Israelites, or when others would hear about the God of the Israelites, they would be astonished and they would want to know what the God of Israelites. It was through the Sabbath, the way they preserved the Sabbath, the way God had given them the regulations and everything that pertains the Sabbath. It sent a signal to the other nations or the neighboring nation. And actually, they would want to know who this God is. And they would want to see who the God the Israelites were worshipping. Not unlike their gods with the small g, unlike their physical God that were not powerful as the God of Israelites. And then we find that he provided manna for 40 years for the Israelites. If he still speaks to us today, if God had an opportunity to provide for them for 40 years, every day they would go out and find food. What is it that you cannot ask God that is not going to give you? And then again, when they were building the, the, the tabernacle, God instructs Moses that they to, to keep an arm of manna to remind the Israelites how he fed them in the wilderness. It's just still, lest he forget how God has been with them. Le unless they could just do their things and forget how God has preserved them because of what he had done for them. So the Sabbath was a way God helped the Israelites rediscover their identity and their God. In the end of the time, even as you see, as they are journeying to Canaan, they would actually speak of one God. And they would actually say what? They will teach about their children that there is a time in war in the wilderness and God was with us. They will teach their goodness of the Lord and the faithfulness of the Lord to who? To the Israelites. It only happened because of the Sabbath. Because they were asked to move of Egypt, they were supposed to go to the wilderness and worship for three days. But what happened, it ended up to be 40 days of rest in the wilderness for them to rediscover themselves and to identify who God is. And then you find here that God actually was a God of they were asked to obey and keep the Sabbath holy. This was in the context of developing a deeper understanding of the character of their creator and about building a lasting relationship. So when you find God asking us to actually obey the Sabbath, he's not interested in how much the extent we are going, but actually what he wants is the true obedience from us. Are we going to keep it sacred? His intention is us to identify about the character of God. He's not like asking, he's not like robbing us of a day off so that we cannot do our things. But actually, he reminds us of the days that have been have passed. He wants us to do what? To come back to him and to rediscover ourselves and to rediscover who God is, irrespective of what has been happening. I'll come, my brother, for the next day. Oh, thank you, To. Uh, on the Tuesday part where we get to learn time for learning priorities and the main key text that was used was Isaiah chapter 58 verse 1 to 14 
where we get to see a, a group of people, of course the Israelites, uh, they have this certain priority, which are, 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 are the customs, I mean, the, the way to do things. They are too much concerned on the do's and the don'ts on a Sabbath, such that they tend to forget what is the priority on a Sabbath day. Sabbath is a day of realizing our priorities. What do we prioritize? When we read the book of Isaiah chapter 58 verse 13 and 14, somebody to read for us. and 14. Isaiah, Isaiah 58 verses 13 and 14 the Bible records and they that shall be of thee shall be shall, shall build the old waste places thou shall raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shall be called the repairer of the bridge the restorer of paths to dwell in verses 13 if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the only of the Lord, honourable, and shalt thou and shalt honour him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor seeking thine own words. Thank you so much, Elder Bran. When we get to see what the verse is telling us, God is like, not your way, but my way. That is what God wants on a Sabbath day. I want it my way, not your way. And on a Sabbath day, it's about delighting in knowing and learning the character and the purposes of God. Of God, You see, the Sabbath won't make sense if the day ends and we have learned nothing about God. The Sabbath will only make sense when we learn about God. Yes, there are some do's and don'ts on a Sabbath day, but they should not be a priority for us. They should not be a priority for us than knowing the character of God. We should strive on a Sabbath day to continue knowing the character, not only knowing, but living the character of God. Because when we live the character of God, then the Sabbath will be a blessing to everybody. I welcome my brother, Bonfres. Wow, thank you so much. Now, uh, the Wednesday part, the subtopic, time for finding balance. Now, the outlook. Uh, finding balance. How do we do our things as uh, Christians? Do we balance uh, whatsoever it is that we are doing uh, at home, in churches, and even at school? Now, the key text here was uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 and uh, 18. Someone to read? Seventeen and eighteen. Matthew chapter five verse seventeen and, and eighteen says, "Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfil. For assuredly I say to you, till the heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will not by no means pass from the law." Till all is fulfilled. Oh, thank you so much. Jesus being our role model came from heaven and to the earth and he grew together with us. And uh, before he came, uh, the word of God was something there since creation. Now there were the Pharisees and uh, even the Sadducees, the scribes, how they were doing their things. When Jesus came, he came with a different way to give us light. Now, Jesus said that he did not come to break the law of Sabbath, but he just came to give that law light, to support it. Now, when we look at uh, how Jesus handled the Sabbath, uh, he could do some works that uh, gave glory to God on the particular Sabbath. For example, you'll find Jesus Christ healing people on a Sabbath, which was contrary to the Jews, uh, they really respected the Sabbath as in, in a form that they were close to worshipping the Sabbath, but not uh, keeping it holy or worshipping God alone. Now, Jesus uh, healed the people, he preached the gospel, and uh, we see that this Sabbath is the day that Jesus Christ used to educate people more about God. 
Now, education being the basis of everything, we find Jesus Christ embracing it here. What are you doing as a Christian on Sabbath? How do you keep the Sabbath day holy? Do you make someone happy? Do you share with someone about the word of God? How do you teach people? Now, uh, someone can also read for me the book of uh, Matthew chapter 12, uh, verse 1. Uh, verse 1 to 13. 1 to? 1 to 13. It says, At that time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read that? Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God and ate the, shoe, the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law that on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? Let I say to you that in this place there is one greater than the temple. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the guilt guiltless, for the Son of Man is the Lord even of the Sabbath. Thank you. Now, as uh, it has just been read, for the Son of Man is the Lord of Sabbath. Jesus even goes further, telling us that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So what does this mean? Uh, literally, uh, when something is made for you, First, you have to respect it. You have to respect the maker. Now, uh, God giving us the ten decalogues, the fourth decalogue being obey the Sabbath day and <coughs> keep it holy. In as much as we keep the Sabbath day holy, we should do things that glorify the name of the Lord God, our creator. Now, there is a question just before I finish here. Uh, the question goes, what about your own Sabbath keeping? Have you turned into a day of just don't do this and don't do that, rather than a time of tru truly rest in the Lord and know him better? So you can ask yourself, what are you doing on the Sabbath day? Kindly let us simulate the example of Jesus Christ uh, in keeping the Sabbath day holy, even uh, making it a literal sign of our Lord God Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, my uh, panelists, uh, for this uh, embracing on the lesson. Now, I, on Thursday part, uh, I love this lesson because it is pointing us to Christ. We are seeing uh, the revelation of Christ on a Sabbath. Now, I just love the part of introduction uh, of this part when it's taking us back to the account of creation in Genesis chapter 2, verses you read as you go down. It is telling us that and God himself rested on the seventh day. God himself rested. So uh, I wonder when you read Isaiah 40, 28, God doesn't get tired. But for him resting is a full example unto us. You also find that on the same day, God sanctified it. When I read my Bible clearly, I find that there are only three things sanctified in the Bible. That is a marriage, that is Sabbath, and that is tithe. So it is such a day of importance. So he sanctified it, meaning he made it holy. So it's something holy made and set aside for God himself. Also, he blessed it. It has blessings accompanied with it as you, you go along by the Sabbath. But now I love what my friends have emphasized on the uh, introduction part up to the Wednesday part. But now on Thursday part, I want us to see, after Christ setting an example, uh, did he keep the Sabbath or did he come to destroy the Sabbath? As we have read in, in Matthew 5.17, you find that he says that, For remember, I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. Uh, if you read the book of Luke 13.10, uh, that is a story of healing the crippled woman on the Sabbath. Uh, it begins in verse 10 by saying, that is Luke 13.10, it says, On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. So he never came to destroy the law we see even he himself kept the what kept the sabbath to be followed as an example our second question will be did, G did the apostles after the ascension of christ keep the sabbath when we look at acts chapter 13 that is paul we look at acts 13 um, that is from 14 going downwards acts 13 14 16 uh, it says this now when paul and his company lost from paphos 
they came to Paga in Pamphylia and John departing from them returned to Jerusalem. But when they departed from the from Paga, they came to Antioch in Pisidia and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. So we find that even after the ascension, these are apostles, we know who Paul is. They still kept the Sabbath, meaning what? They followed what Christ did. So meaning that he never came to destroy but fulfill the Sabbath itself. Now, uh, when you also read in the book of uh, the same chapters, you continue downwards from verses 38. It says that uh, from verse 38, the same chapter in Acts 13, it says that um, be it known unto you thereof men and brethren that through this man is uh, preached unto you forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware thereof lest that come upon you which is spoken of in the prophets. He also says in verse 42, And behold, he despises and wander and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which he shall in no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. So I'm finding here a very clear uh, clarification that there were both the Jews and the Gentiles, and they were both on the same Sabbath day, are listening to Paul and they plead him to come on the next Sabbath to also preach to them meaning the Sabbath was never meant for a Jew nor for a Gentile even if we go back to uh, the uh, account of uh, creation we see that the Sabbath was put in place even 2300 years before there existed a Jew so we find that the Sabbath was kept for man was made for man and not man for the Sabbath now as I summarize up I would like to ask uh, the last question answer the question that says that Indeed, uh, does God expect us in this Christian age of or this time of end to keep the Sabbath? We find that indeed we are to keep the Sabbath of the Lord. If we read the book of Matthew chapter 15, uh, when Christ, the disciples come to Christ and are asking him about the signs uh, of the time and the destruction of the temple of Jerusalem in 70 AD, what Christ says in Matthew 15, 20, what does it say? Someone can read for me from the panelists. Matthew 15, 20. Matthew 15, 20. Matthew 15, 20 says, These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Matthew 15, 20. Yeah, 15, 20. Yes. So you find, as you go along, you find that I think it was supposed to be Matthew 24, 20, not 15, 20. Matthew 24, 20 saying that Christ is speaking about the signs of the times and is telling the disciples that, Take heed that uh, the coming of man, that is the second coming of Christ, may not find you being on a winter or on a what? Or on a Sabbath. So you find that even at the end of time, we expect that there will be a people keeping the Sabbath of the Lord. So that means that indeed the Sabbath exists from eternity past up to eternity future. So the Sabbath was meant for man and not man for the Sabbath. It is a day of freedom. You also find that in Revelation 14. Uh, in chapter 12, where they say that here is the patient of those who keep the commandments of Christ and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So there is people who should keep the Sabbath and it's still a, a sign, as you read in Ezekiel 12, 12, it's a sign actually for the people of God and the true worship of God. So as we summarize uh, this lesson, we find that indeed a Sabbath was meant for the Lord and we don't keep the Sabbath to be saved, but we keep the Sabbath because we are saved the law of love for he says that in matthew in john 15 10 he says that for if you love me keep my commandments the law of love uh, thank you wow wow thank you uh, so much uh, my brother eric indeed the sabbath was made for man not man for the sabbath the moment we start uh, viewing a sabbath as a burden or uh, the moment we start only coming to church to avoid uh committing a sin by disobeying the commandment number four, then we lose the identity of the Sabbath itself. But if the Sabbath brings joy to us, if the Sabbath brings us closer to our Creator, if the Sabbath is a day that we yearn from Sunday, we just say, we just think of the Sabbath because it's a day that everything comes to a standstill and we ca go and uh, a commune with our creator indeed the sabbath will be a blessing uh, to us but the moment we put a sabbath to be a burden to us indeed we will not f re we will not fully realize the blessings that comes with the sabbath itself uh, so as we come to a, a, an end i will just ask my panelists once again uh, in a one minute each to uh, say their closing uh, remarks 
I'll start from my brother Eric and then Bonface. My brother Erastus. Uh. Thank you so much, Elder Brian. My question to my viewers today is, is the Sabbath a delight to you? Do you take time with God on a Sabbath day? If not, please do so. The Sabbath is an opportunity to learn from God and live like God. May God guide you as you find a way in which you can pri prioritize in the things of God. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Erastus. Now, uh, to the viewers, uh, thank you for taking your time. Uh, even as much as we conclude, I would like to say that uh, let's use the Sabbath for God's purpose. Let's not get restricted that on Sabbath day we have to go to church and sit and hear the word of the Lord and then come back home and sit down. No, that is not the way. Let us emulate Christ's example uh, as he is our role model. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The Sabbath. We've learned that the Sabbath is the time for us to rediscover ourselves, know more about God, learn about the character of God. My question is, as the Sabbath, it was as an identity for the chosen or the elect people of God. Is it still the same with us today? Yeah. To whoever is viewing this, I want to remind you that don't just go to the Sabbath because it is a norm or because you were born in it. Remember, you're you have a great role to play there. Keep the Sabbath and may the others see God through you. May the others learn the character of God. Sh it shouldn't just be that on the Sabbath you just you dress nicely and go to church and you sit and you do nothing. Can you learn about God? Can you share about God to others? That is the role of the Sabbath. That is why God says, honor the Sabbath and hallow the day that God has blessed and it has sanctified. He has blessed it for us. Let us learn and let us enjoy the privileges that God has given us on the Sabbath. A lot has been bestowed upon us. It is just us to take a leap of faith and to find out what is it that actually God wants for us to do. And the last thing when my brother asked about, uh, will there be people in the end time that are going to keep the Sabbath? And I say, yes, it will be there. That is the mark of God. That is the seal of God. When John says, remember, the fear God and give him glory, for thou his judgment has come. And whoever is going to have the mark of the beast and worship the beast and everything, they're going to suffer the wrath of God. And those who will not have the mark of the beast and actually have the mark of God, which is keeping the Sabbath, they'll be among the sealed people of God. So there's a lot of privileges and blessings that come upon the Sabbath. But the primary goal is, are you learning about God? Do you keep it for people to see that you're a Sabbath keeper? Or do you keep it for others to see and to enjoy actually the blessings that are flowing forth from you to others? Like the Israelites, when they worship God and when they kept their promises and everything that was in the wilderness, the other nations were like, come on, we want to know the God who these people worship. It was out of the Sabbath. So it is a challenge to us today. Let us give the Sabbath and let others actually want to know more about God through the way we keep the Sabbath holy and how we relate ourselves with God. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. My viewer, wherever you are, I would just like to tell you, maybe you might be uh, viewing this for the first time. Maybe you might be the first person viewing us saying, we've spoken about the Sabbath. This is a day set aside for worship by God himself, our example. It's a day for worship. It's a day of freedom kept in the commandment of God, in the ark that was given on the two tablets that were written by God himself, God's finger. So you find that it's a law of God given by himself. So we worship God on a Sabbath because we are saved. When he, we keep the Sabbath, we simply follow God because he says in the book of uh, Ezekiel 12 of 12, he says that for it is a sign between me and my people. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you are probably watching this and you don't understand the theology behind the Sabbath, and perhaps you are not even keeping the Sabbath, and perhaps you are wondering, out of these seven days, which day is actually the true Sabbath? You don't need to be a Seventh-day Adventist to understand the theology of the Sabbath. You only need the Bible and open mind. And I will go ahead and recommend to you a book. It's called When... God said, remember, the book is written by Mark Finley. 
You can search for that book and you can read it. As well, I can recommend to you the book Great Controversy by Sister Ellen G. White. You can read and you will understand the true Sabbath day. You get to understand the theology of the, of the Sabbath. But your basic reference and our basic reference is always the Bible. Just have the Bible, have an open mind and study and pray and God will lead you to understand the hidden truths behind the theology of Sabbath. Thank you so much, my panelists, and may God bless you to our viewers. Uh, thank you so much as we uh, study this lesson. Welcome again to our next uh, uh, lesson, that lesson number 13, as we conclude uh, this quote. I will ask our sister, uh, Penina, to pray with us as we conclude. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the opportunity you've given us to study your word. Thank you, God, for you reminded us the reason why you wear the Sabbath for us and why you bless it for us. Forgive us for the times you've not done that is according to your will. Even for the way we're viewing this, Lord, may you bless them. Even as they study your word, give us the strength to study more and to search more into the scripture so that we may please you, Father, and may others see the glory and may others see the praises from us. Be with us, guide us, and protect us. For this, my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.